Hello everyone, this is Sarah Warren, Towson University Salt, for a recording for Philosophy and Music. This week's recording will be of Rules of Play by Salem and Zimmerman. To avoid lack of repetitiveness, I'm just going to focus on one thing that I found in, in our paper this week. And it was actually a term by Roger Coilos, which we actually talked about a few weeks ago in another, um, another text by himself. Um, what I'm going to be telling you about is that Roger Coyos classified play, which is what our topic will be for this evening, is that according to him there are four fundamental categories for what types of play there are. There is a gong, a leia, mimicry, and the links. Now I would spend time telling you all the definitions of the various ones, but I'm going to discuss one of them. And to save time, I will just tell you about this one. Um, a gong means competitive play. Now, as I read through the text, of course, there were so many things that I could try to link to playing the piano, but they all seemed so repetitive. I, was, I felt like I was talking about them already in the past couple of weeks, especially in my last week's video, which ended up being quite long. I should have saved some of that information for this week's video, but nonetheless. Um, to compare it to piano, it's kind of difficult, because in the article they were speaking about uh, the health of a player, like if you're playing uh, Super Smash Brothers, or if you're playing tic-tac-toe. Now, how does this relate to piano? Well, I figured, okay, competitive play. Focus on that phrase. Competitive play. How does that relate to piano? Well, it's very simple, at least to me, that there's many difficulties in competitiveness in the world of musicians. Well, for example, um, there's sight reading. Well, sight reading is when is the capability of being given a piece of music and being able to read through it, never seeing it before, just being able to, to notice, okay, this is what key it's in, and if you were told to sing it, you could do it on the spot. Now, maybe you might not be able to, but that's just depending on your level of strength and, and understanding and being able to read the music. Um, it's just like uh, when a child learns how to read with bigger words, like, Classify might be a harder word than a spelling bee. Well, for music, it's like knowing, okay, three measures ahead, I see that that F is going to be a double sharp, which means it's two more sharps than usual. But um, it's, that's basically what sight reading is, being able to see that it says, okay, C, E, G, F, A, C, and another octave kind of thing, and being able to show it to others. Well, in the world of music, I personally wasn't sure if I wanted to go to school for music or not because it became so much work that I wasn't enjoying it as much. Um, with my two previous teachers ago, she was a friend of mine from church actually, um, she went to my high school as well and she was giving me piano lessons and having me practice songs for if I was going to be doing college auditions. And there are very hard pieces. And Yes, I did get to the point where I could play them very well, but I can't play them that long more because I haven't been practicing them. But my point is that if you gave me that piece of music now, I would look at it and just think, I can't play that on the spot for you. It's, it's too hard. And yes, that's kind of, in a way, embarrassing for me to admit, but in a way it's not. I mean, I'm owning up to the fact that I can't, I have my limits. I can't do everything. But then the competitive part is, that there's someone else out there that could play it the second they see it. So I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to show you this piece. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's called the Sonata Number no. 12 in F major. And it's played allegro. And I see that there's one flat, which is B. And yeah, so I'm just going to try to remember how to play it. And you can see how much stuff my teacher would have me write on this. Um, so I would get it perfect, <laughs> just so I could have it completely down. This is only the first page. There are many, many more pages. So I'm going to show you what it's like to sight read. First, I'm going to play the right hand separately and then the left hand. messed up. I'm not familiar with the piece, but 
that shouldn't be the case. The fact that I know this one makes it a little bit easier for me being able to sight read it, but you could hear that I messed up a few notes. Maybe you couldn't, but I know that I did. Um, I could think of a few people that are actually, they actually go to Taos and went to my high school, I won't give names, but um, they would read this and it would be the easiest, that would be, it would be like them playing something so simple. It would be so easy for them. And people like that are the reason why people like me get so timid about having a major in music. It's so competitive, like I said before. Um, but yeah, so now I'll play left hand and see if I can play that. This would have to be practiced many times. Um, if I was given this in an audition or just in class and I had to play it on the spot, um, I'd probably play it very slow. That's what I have to do in my lessons. Um, but then there's other people that would be able to sight read it and just play it so easily because they're so advanced in the music and work so hard with it. But um, yeah, so that's an example of how piano can be competitive and competitive play of a gone, as Callow would say. Um, so, that's it for this week's video on philosophy and music.